Hi, I'm David Hamburger, and in this lesson, we're going to look at how to create contrast by combining single note licks with chords on the blues. This lesson draws on ideas from a few of the previous lessons in this series, so if you haven't yet seen the lessons on playing into the downbeat, chord hits, or chords up the neck, you might want to go check those out uh, for some more details about what these chord voicings are that I'm using, how I'm phrasing the licks, and then come back and check out what we're doing right now. So the idea is when you're playing single note licks over a steady bass, there can be a certain kind of starkness to the sound. If you've just got that kind of phrasing can leave a lot of space. Space is good, but also just having single notes over the bass sort of leaves a certain amount of space in the middle register of the guitar that's not being used. Again, space is good, but if you want to create a bigger sense of dimension, um, more elements going on, adding in these chords as responses to the single note licks can give you a new sort of depth, a new kind of texture, and also create an additional level of call and response. So if we have a short lick, followed by a longer lick. That's really cool. But then we can answer that first short lick with chords. And then we can answer the longer lick with a longer chord lick. And so now we've got the call and response between the short and the long lick and the call and response between each lick and the following chord statement. So I'm also using the chords to resolve the same way that the licks resolve. So this opening lick and four and one plays up into the downbeat. One, two, three, and four and one. And then the chord lick, three, four, and also leads you into the next bar that's coming after that. So you have one, two, three, four, and. So you're adding another level of momentum to the solo that you're playing as well. And so what I'm using for the chords right now are variations of A7 and E7. So for E7, here's an open E chord. Here's an E7 as we head up the neck with the fifth and the flat seven and the third. And then here's another inversion of E with a flat seven and the root and the fifth. And when I'm down here, I could theoretically take off the third on top and just have the fifth and the flat seven and the root. And when I'm here, the closest A chord I can get is this A7 just the root and the third and the flat seven. And when I'm up here, there's a few places I could go. I could go just to a straight A major triad with the third and the fifth and the root. I could put the ninth on top to make an A add nine chord, or even get the seventh in there and get an A nine chord with the third and the flat seven and the nine on top. So that if I was playing that chord response, that or so if you want to hear the melody go up you could move up like that if you want to start on this chord you could come down or do more of a common tone approach where you keep the same note on top keep one note in common as you move from chord to chord. <clears throat> but each time I'm using the same rhythmic phrasing, so once you've got the idea of an opening lick followed by that particular chord rhythm, you can experiment with different ways to answer your own licks. And then when we move on, coming into the third bar of the first line, 
you can take a longer single note lick and answer it with a longer chord phrase. So here we've got E7, and then using the open string as a melody note, playing a half step below the E7 chord we want to get to, and then taking the pinky off to kind of roll through or arpeggiate the E7 chord. So, so I'm really just kind of following around this melodic idea and then harmonizing it with the chords. And not bothering to play a chord on every note. Right, I'm not doing that. And you don't have to, and it's lighter and a little more uh, fluid. If you're using chords on sort of the important accents um, and just letting single notes fill in in between. So <clears throat> you can divide the blues up into three lines of four bars each. So we've just looked at the first line, bars one through four. We've had a single note lick, a chord answer, a longer lick into bar three, and then a longer chord answer. Now the second line we can treat in a really similar way. And for the A chord, we're not really jumping around, we're just grabbing this A chord in open position and doing a little bit of just sort of embellishing of the chord, taking an A7 going down to the 6th and then back to the 7th on top. And just using index, middle, and ring on the top three strings. Index, and then a pinch using middle and ring on the top two strings. And then... Now use the same long answer in bars seven and eight as in bars three and four. And there's nothing wrong with a certain amount of repetition. In fact, <clears throat> when you're using these chord answers, it can kind of give a kind of structure to your solo where maybe you start to vary the single note licks first, and then these chord answers in the first two lines remain constant as a kind of arranging feature or, you know, a kind of a way to have some structure built into the solo. And now you're not having to look at, well, what am I gonna play for these first eight bars? Now you're just looking at, well, I've got this little shape that's marked off by these chord hits. And so you just have to come up with a couple of short and short single note licks. Play your chords. And then maybe create a variation that's a little longer on that opening lick. So now, your job is a lot simpler. One idea can kick off the whole first eight bars. come into the turnaround. We have a little less space because often on the five chord, you might play through the bar and then you want to play something on the A chord that's going to lead you back to the one. And then you've got chords moving more quickly for the last two bars, bars 11 and 12. You want to go from the one chord to the four chord to the one to the five. So we can maybe play a shorter version of this A7 idea that we had before. And then land on the B7. And so that gives us a shape and a way to play through the whole chorus.
So that's doing it just using seventh chords and major chords. But we could also use some <clears throat> more expanded voicings, sixth and ninth chord voicings. So for E, we could use this E sixth chord with the third and the sixth and the root, and then this one with the sixth and the root and the third, and this one with the root, third, and sixth. And of course, each one of those can be slid down two frets to make a ninth chord. There's E9 with the nine, no, with the fifth, and the flat seven and the nine on top. And then here's E9 with the flat seven and the nine and the fifth on top. And then up here, here's the last one with the ninth and the fifth and the flat seven. And you can turn those around and get the, the A versions. A9, A6 down to A9, A6 down to A9, and A6 down to A9. But we could use the same kind of rhythmic structure and put the chords in the same places, just have different colors now for the voice for the chord voicings. So we can go from A from E6 down to A9. Because here's A6 and there's the A9. So again, sort of following a little melodic idea on top. And again, a short idea answered by a longer chord idea. So here we're taking E6 going down chromatically to E9, <clears throat> and then sliding up to E6 and back to E9. So here's the first four bars. And then for the next four bars, bars five through eight, starting with the A chord, where we're taking A6 and going down chromatically to A9. And then instead of having a lick that climbs up, we could have a chord lick that climbs down, this time on the, on the E. So in bars uh, three and four, we have sort of moving up. And then in bars seven and eight, we have Moving down, half stepping up into this sound, just like we half stepped up into this sound before. And then again, <clears throat> the turnaround's a little busier. A few different ways we could do that, I think, uh, in the opening example. I did something like that. So, A to A9, A6 to A9, and again pivoting off of the open E string. But also, yeah, you could start on that A9, go A9 to A6 to E. So, So that gives you a couple of different ways to approach this. You can use seventh chords. You can use a combination of sixth and ninth chords. And of course, you can start to blend and mix and match all those things too. And the idea is to give yourself a bit of a roadmap so that when you're faced with playing a couple of choruses on the blues, 
you don't feel like you have like 24 bars of completely blank canvas to fill up. You have these different kinds of call and response between the shorter and the longer licks, and then the call and response between the licks and the chords, and the chords themselves can have a quality of call and response between shorter and longer licks, shorter and longer chord-based licks. And then through all of that, you have these different kinds of choices about, you know, are you going to play you know, minor pentatonic licks, major pentatonic licks? Are you going to play with more of a seventh sound and more of a sixth and a ninth sound? So it starts to give you a lot of different possibilities, but still giving you a way to keep everything sort of organized in your head so that you have a scheme going into things where you don't know exactly what you're going to play, but you have an idea of how you're going to play it. So I hope you have fun with this lesson. If you'd like to know more about improvising and arranging and how to work on these kinds of things, you can find out more about that and about me at fretboardconfidential.com. And I'll see you in the next lesson.